I love the visual in this song, dry bones rattling. What we thought was dead or is impossible coming to life through God's power. We invite you to stand and sing. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. ever stopped you this is the sound of dry bones rattling this is the praise make a dead man walk again open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again this is the sound of dry bones rattling we know this, we hold on to hope, relentless, irrational hope that God's going to show up and he's going to do it again. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man.
from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain top, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified. This morning, we invite you to consider what it would look like to answer God's call to walk out of the darkness and into his amazing light. Sing with us. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable, are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believe. Safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep, and it's time to leave. Come on and rise up, take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your friend new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. When he said your name, the thing that filled your veins was more than blood, so kind of love to wash his sin away. Now the door is open wide, and the stone's been rolled aside. The old is gone, the light has grown, so come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us?
God, we come to you this morning with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving that you are that loving, good Father who keeps the door of reconciliation and renewal open for us and that um, we don't have to have it all figured out and we don't have to have tidied up all of our messes before we come back to you. All we need to do is to just turn to you in our hearts and, um, and ask you to come home. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, happy Easter, everybody. We are starting this morning in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but they went, when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reggie, helping me out this morning with our intro. Friends, it is so delightful to get to be with you and worship on this Easter morning. If we haven't met yet, my name is Hope. I'm one of the pastors here, and welcome to the venue. This is our worship service that is crafted for community online, and we would love the chance to be able to greet you well. So if you want to say hello to us, you can text coffee uh, to the number at the bottom of your screen and we will send a coffee mug your way. And if you have any questions or want to get on an email list or anything like that, 
Texting coffee is also the perfect way to start. And we have lots of different opportunities to get involved in this season. So if you're looking to take a next step, we have plenty of opportunities coming up. Uh, if you are interested in membership or baptism, we do have a new members class coming up in just two weeks. So you can go online at feumc.org slash new members to find more info about that class, as well as all of the other upcoming ones. If you're looking to um, learn more about joining, or if you just are wanting to learn more about the church in general, that's the perfect place to start. Um, if you want something that is a little bit lower bar than that, we do have an event called Come Learn Some More that is happening on April 21st. And Owen and I, uh, both pastors here, will be hanging out on the patio making s'mores. We'd love for you to stop by You can ask any questions that you might have, and we'd love the chance to get to meet you. And coming up this summer, we are all headed to the scoop for ice cream. So this is our favorite way to kick off the summer together. So this is a church-wide event for everybody from our youngest of friends to all of the grandparents, etc. We'd love to get to see you at the scoop. And this also is kicking off our Forks and Fellowship for the summer. So if you are looking for a place to get connected in a smaller group, want to meet some other people, then this is just the perfect place to start to get to meet some other friends. And lastly, if you maybe aren't interested in Forks and Fellowship or The Scoop, you want something that is uh, more kind of teaching focused, we have prayer workshops that are one-offs, so you can just come to one. You don't have to sign up for the whole series. They will be starting after Easter on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings starting on April 10th. So just about 10 days or so from now. And you can find more info on that online at feumc.org slash smallgroups24. And we are just so thrilled about worship this morning. And we are grateful that we get to worship with you wherever you are, whether you are worshiping with us from home or maybe you're at a friend or relative's house this morning. Uh, wherever you are, let us worship our risen Lord together. Uh, if the women had, had looked past that stone in the pre-dawn and they had found Jesus' body laying there, then Easter would just, at best, be a story about uh, an inspiring man who was tragically killed for his faith. But thanks be to God, that's not what they found, right? They found an empty tomb. Resurrection completely shattered our idea of what is possible and probable with God. It took the whole of humanity's history and future and put it into a new story, a resurrection story. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore. Just as 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, again, happy Easter, everybody. If we haven't met yet, my name's Owen. It's great to be uh, together with you today. Um, uh, just start with the word of confession. I sometimes lie. Uh, I try real hard not to lie. It's not a good quality to have, you know, to be a liar. Uh, it creates all sorts of challenges and problems, primarily. And first of all, for me, it's a little bit of a job hazard. Second of all, you know, your pants are always on fire. So it's better just in general to try not to lie. And I do try, but sometimes. You know, in certain circumstances, when those circumstances call for it, you have to say things that you don't believe are completely true. And when those moments come, uh, I have discovered, thanks to my siblings who pointed it out for me, uh, I have a tell. My voice always goes up at the end. Uh, someone came by the church a few weeks ago. We were prepping for a meeting that was coming up. And uh, when he got here, he just kind of looked rattled. Um, and so I was like, well, let me just walk around the building while we meet. And so we walked outside. And as we did, I said, you know, hey, how, how's your day going? And he said, oh, it's great. Um, and then out of courtesy, he asked me the same question. And I said, well, I mean, since we're both lying to each other, it's great for me too, right? Not both of our voices going up. To be fair, we did spend the next three laps around the building choosing not to lie to each other before we started our meeting. But, you know, there's all sorts of circumstances. That happens with the kids all the time. You know, Dad, is, is the world burning down around us? No! Everything's fine! We're definitely going to leave it better off for you than we found it. You're great! Don't worry. If you came today, uh, I'm guessing that you have showed up in an expectant place. And by that, I mean... You either came expecting, right, knowing exactly what you wanted to hear, and probably that means exactly what songs you wanted to sing, or you came expectant, knowing exactly what you figured you'd hear from somebody like me, and knowing that you would graciously nod your head through it, trusting nothing that I have to say. And I get that. The Easter story is a big one, and uh, honestly, it's, it's hard for me to blame you, right? But it's always good to be able to have in these moments, uh, LeVar Burton in your back pocket, pocket, who would regularly remind us on reading Rainbow that you don't have to take my word for it, right? I was reading uh, one of Peter's original sermons a few weeks ago. Peter uh, was one of Jesus's favorite disciples. He sort of became the de facto leader of the early church, which to be fair, Jesus had appointed him to do that work about a year before Jesus died. And so Peter finds himself after Jesus's resurrection 
in an odd spot trying to explain the whole story of Jesus to people who really hadn't heard very much of the story at all before. You can go read the whole exchange if you want to. It's in Acts chapter 10. But there's this one line. He's like in the middle of a sermon. It kind of caught my eye. He's working his way like very logically play by play through Jesus's life. And he's doing it to make a point about how Jesus's death and resurrection are for all people, every single person, um, and especially the people who were on the outside who we didn't think counted, right? He's talking about how God restores and makes things whole through the death and resurrection of Jesus. But in the middle of this very well thought out logical point by point narrative progression, it's like he pauses for an outburst and he says, and, and we are witnesses. A witness has two jobs to see something and then to say something, to see it, right? To experience it, to take an account of what is taking place and then to report that, right? To, to share it out, to tell others what they saw or experienced or remember. Peter was, you know, not just talking about something he heard about Jesus. He didn't just say, well, Jesus was filled with the spirit and we know that he did good and that he healed some people, that he died and rose again. He says, we saw him heal. We saw him killed. We ate with him on Easter afternoon. And we, we are witnesses. The last few weeks, we've invited folks from our church family to come up and to share some of their stories. Just like Peter, they are witnesses to the work of God in the world. They have seen God at work in their lives, and they were willing to say it out loud. And I think maybe that's why Peter's line stood out to me so much. It's, they weren't just recounting in the third person things that they've heard about God or that they trust God will do or would do or might do. They were sharing what they have seen and experienced in a way that nobody else could share. They are witnesses to the work of God, reminding us that God still forgives and restores when families are beyond fractured and repair, that God still heals and gives new life when futures seem like they're at a dead end, that God still calls and equips and sends us in different seasons of life, whether we're expecting it or not, and that God meets us in wilderness places and hard moments when the foundations of our faith are rattled and that that is enough. If you didn't catch all those stories, you've got to go back and listen. It's so easy for us to dismiss this idea that God is active and alive at work in the world because of our 21st century sensibilities. But these folks, they've seen the work of God up close and personal, and they want to remind us of it. I mean, one of them even said at the end of their sort of moment, they said, if, if we hadn't seen it up close and personal, we wouldn't have believed it. God is still in the business of wholeness of making things whole, of putting broken things back together. It's not all that different, honestly, to be a witness today than it was for them, uh, for those who witnessed the risen Jesus. We like to think of how sophisticated we are these days. C.S. Lewis called that chronological snobbery, which I love that idea, but they had very real pressures on them 2,000 years ago as well. I mean, it's not as if people just resurrected all the time in the first century, half the people who are offering their witness accounts, their eyewitness accounts to this, wouldn't even have been allowed to testify as credible sources in a courtroom. All of them were being hunted door to door by the authorities to kind of root out the rest of the Jesus movements and silence those who were cho choosing to speak out. So saying, and we were witnesses, it's not like, ah, just trust me, sort of thing. It was risky. I actually really love how choppy and messy and different the resurrection stories all are from gospel account to gospel account. Everyone chooses to tell like their part of it in a way that they saw and experienced it, even when timelines don't match up perfectly and some moments get highlighted differently in one retelling or the other, like John's as an example. Uh, he actually tells Mary's story. Uh, Mary went to the tomb, discovered that the body's not there. She goes back and gets everybody. They come out to look, then they all go back home. And Mary is just lingering there in the garden, and she has a chance to, to talk with the risen Jesus, right? I mean, it's her story from start to finish. But when John retells it, he remembers the parts that are important to him. So he interjects himself into the middle of her story to make it about him, because why not? And he talks about how he was racing Peter to the tomb and how, you know, he just happens to mention how he outran Peter because everything is a competition for John, apparently. Anyway, he goes back to Mary's story at the end and... Um, talks about how, again, when they kind of had gone back to the locked room, how she got a chance to, to stick around and experience. These accounts, all of them, they don't hesitate to point out the embarrassing parts. 
Some of the disciples missed the moment entirely. None of them seemed to have understood what Jesus had been talking about until long after it's taken place. Two of them headed home, walked down the road dejected, side by side with Jesus, and didn't even know they were talking to Jesus until he broke bread with them later that night. Others doubted. They challenged each other. They didn't trust each other until they saw it for themselves. These stories that they're telling, they're not stories that you cook up to make yourselves feel better. They didn't scrub the narrative. They didn't come up with a party line. They didn't get everybody on the same page. They didn't have to walk around with their voices going up, trying to pretend like they were telling the truth. They saw something, and at great personal risk, they chose to share it with others. Here's one of those accounts from Luke, the Gospel of Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, and when they went in, they didn't find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women, who had come with the spices, were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men, in dazzling white, said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and the rest, all the disciples who hadn't been there. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who were with them who told all of this to the disciples. But these words seemed to the disciples, an idle tale, and they did not believe them. That would be an unfortunate end to this story. But there's one more verse. It says, But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Because he chose to get up and go, even though it seemed to whatever to be true, he got up and he went to see for himself. And in a few weeks, when he walked from Joppa, a town called Joppa, to a town called Caesarea, he was able to preach a sermon and pause in the middle of it and say, and we were witnesses. Friends, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. God is in the business of making things whole. If it were not true, if I had not seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed that it was true. Don't miss the opportunity to get up and to go and see for yourselves. Be a witness, not a bystander to the work of God. Don't take my word for it. Go and listen to their stories and then look, watch for it wait for it. And if you're bold enough, ask for it. And when you've seen the work of God, tell everyone what you've seen. Name the work. Point it out in your lives. Don't be obnoxious or anything like that, but this is good news. And we need some good news. We need to know that God still heals, that God still saves, that God still shows up and meets us in unlikely places, that God still loves us even when we don't feel lovable and forgives people, even the people we don't like very much. And then, when you step back, you too will be able to say with great gratitude, and I am a witness to resurrection. Happy Easter, everybody. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Irene, and thank you, Owen. Uh, friends, as we continue to reflect on the glory of Easter, uh, let's continue in a posture of prayer. Holy God, what a gift it is to be able to be witnesses. What a gift it is this morning to be able to wake up knowing that we can look for resurrection all around us because 
You, oh God, are not dead, but you are indeed alive and you are at work all around us, not just on that very first Easter, but you continue to be at work in our midst all around us. Uh, give us eyes to be able to see the ways in, we the ways in which your resurrection power is at work in our community, at work in our families, at work in our friendship, and at work even in our very own lives. God, I don't know what everyone is bringing this morning, this Easter morning. I don't know what deathiness we carry when we show up to the tomb expecting to anoint your body. But I know that there is deathiness all around us, things that we carry that make it hard to show up here and to celebrate and even believe in your resurrection. But this morning, I ask that you would meet us wherever we are and remind us of the good news that we find in your resurrection. That whatever difficult thing we are going through that felt like, gosh, there was no way out of this thing, this is a day that we get to celebrate and rejoice and shout from the mountaintops that you are a God, that even death is never the last thing because you are a God of resurrection. Lord, it is a, a bold thing to get to be a witness, a bold thing to be able to testify to the truth that you are indeed alive and at work all around us, even when we can't see it or know to pay attention to it. But I ask that you would empower each and every one of us today, that we might be able to be good witnesses. Um, not because somebody else long ago and far away experienced being a witness to your resurrection, but God, I ask that you would allow each and every one of us to be able to be witnesses to the upfront work that we get to see all around us of your good and faithful resurrecting work. God, we ask all of this in the strong name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Easter is about so much more, even than just Jesus rising from the grave. Easter is about God's being faithful to his own promises. It's about God refusing to abandon creation to itself. And it's not just about remembering something amazing God did one day a long time ago. It's being awakened to the reality that God is doing amazing things right now in our world today, everywhere around us.
risen, he is risen, he's alive. Well, friends, what a delight it has been to get to be together from lots of different places this morning. I love getting to see on Facebook in the comment section all of the places that people are worshiping from and everyone kind of saying Happy Easter. And uh, thank you again to Ron, who has been online this morning in the comments, putting up sermon notes and that sort of thing. If you have any questions or any way we can help you as we head out of worship, feel free to ask them right there. And today we do have um, communion all morning long. And anytime we have that in person, we always want to extend the offer to communion for folks that are worshiping with us online. So wherever you are this morning, if you would like to reach out to us about getting to receive communion here at the church, or if it can be brought to you at your house, feel free to call us. The number is on the screen and that will go to the church office and we can kind of arrange a way to be able to serve you communion wherever you are. And as we head out from here too, remember, as a reminder, if you would like a venue mug, then just text coffee to the number at the bottom of your screen. And you also can text us any questions you might have or anything else. And we'd love the chance to get to greet you well and answer any questions that you might have. And if you are wanting to take a next step at our church and you're kind of like not really sure where to start, we'd love to see you on April 21st for Come Learn Some More. Owen and I will be on the hospitality patio and that will be from 4.30 until 6. So during our kids and youth programming, you can just drop your kids off and then come say hello. It's a drop in, drop out kind of deal. And we'd love the chance to get to see you there. If not there, we hope to see you at The Scoop on May 19th from 3 until 5 p.m. And you can let us know that you're coming. The RSVP will be out probably next week, but we are so excited for that and would love to get to see everyone there for um, kicking off the start to our summer. Well, as we head out from worship this morning, may you go and be a witness to the resurrection in your everyday ordinary life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, go in peace, friends, and we hope to see you next week. Happy Easter!
Good morning and welcome. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing with us. A great light dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He is risen. 
He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, friends, happy Easter. It is so good to be in worship with you all today. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Hope. I serve as one of the pastors here. And hopefully on your way in, if you are visiting with us this morning, you got a goodie bag filled with homemade cookies. We have those at all three of our entrances. So if you didn't get one on your way in, feel free to grab them on your way out. And if you are looking to get on our email list or ask a question, if you have one throughout the morning, in front of you, there should be this Connect Serve card just in the chair pocket right in front of you. Feel free to fill it out and drop it in the offering boxes on your way out of worship. And that's a great way to get in touch with us. And if you are kind of here, you're looking to take a next step, or you're interested in either membership or baptism, we have a class coming up um, in just a couple weeks. So feumc.org slash new members will take you to all of the opportunities for kind of learning more about our church community here. If that's something that you would like to do either after this morning, or maybe it's been on your to-do list for a while, and today is the day. So feel free to check out that information there. And lastly, we have a lot of friends still hoping to find a seat in the lobby. So if there is a chair next to you, feel free to squunch in, uh, the holy squunch as we like to call it here on Easter. So feel free to move to the center so that way people don't have to climb all over you uh, to be able to get to the seats in the middle. Again, it is so good to be together and to worship together on this Easter Sunday. Brothers and sisters, Jesus of Nazareth, our friend and teacher, who we had just started to recognize as the Son of God, was executed Friday afternoon and laid to rest in a stone tomb. Just as the 
there were two men with them wearing gleaming white clothing. And the women were really afraid. They practically fell to the ground. And the men said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Remember what Jesus told to you when you were in Galilee. He said he would be taken up by sinners. He would be killed on the cross. And on the third day, he would rise up. Ladies, he is not here. He is risen. See the tomb where he laid. See the stone rolled away. He is risen. He is risen. He's alive. See his hands. See his feet. Touch his scars. Heavenly. He is risen. He is risen. He's alive. Jesus' words. They returned from the tomb and they told everyone what they had heard. We give thanks that in Jesus, we are Easter people. We are the people of the resurrection. 
God, in Easter, you delivered your master stroke. You put the exclamation point on your new covenant, your, your beautiful plan to fix what we broke. And we remember that every day is a new opportunity for us to recognize and to reclaim Jesus' resurrection. God, you, you came in the person of Jesus to show us that your love is greater than our expectations. It is louder than our fears. It is richer than all of the wealth of the world. It is above all of the powers that would seek to claim us. It is more final and lasting even than death. And so God, we pray that all of creation might know that what has been cast down is being raised up, that what is old is being made new, and that what is broken is being remade perfectly in you, in Jesus, and through Jesus, in whom all things were made. God, for this reason, we give up our thanks, and we give you our praise, and we rejoice in you today. It is in the strong name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Man, every Easter, Brandon, I'm like, you just stay up here and keep preaching, and it would be great. <laughs> Did I say the same thing at nine? It's true. It just is true. Uh, well, good morning again, friends. If you slipped in after we had a chance to greet you, uh, my name is Hope. I serve as one of the pastors here. And as we settle in before our sermon this morning, just a couple things we wanted to make sure we highlighted. You should have gotten a handout on your way into worship, and it has lots of different things that we have here at the church coming up. Uh, the first of which is on April 21st, Owen and I are going to be hanging out on the patio and making s'mores. So we'd love the chance to get to meet you. It's a great place to come and learn a little bit more. If you if today's your first Sunday or if you've been around for a couple weeks and you wanted to introduce yourself to us, ask a question, feel free to come. It is also during kids and youth programming. So feel free to drop kids off and then come over and make us more. And also on the patio this morning, if you haven't already found them, there is coffee and donuts and all kinds of goodies out there. And headed to, we are all headed to the scoop on May 19th from 3 to 5 p.m. This is going to be a church-wide event. So if you are looking to kind of kick off the summer with us, we would love to get to see you out there at the scoop, one of our favorite things to do at the beginning of summer. And that will also kind of kick off our Forks and Fellowship groups over the summer. So that are kind of small groups that get together about once a month and pick a restaurant, you go to a restaurant together kind of deal. So it's a great way to get to meet some other people in our church community. And if you would like to sign up for that, the link to it is at the very bottom of your handout. And then on the back of the handout, we have a lot of opportunities coming up. Next week, we are starting a brand new sermon series all on the Lord's Prayer. So maybe you learned the Lord's Prayer growing up. We regularly say it in this service and at our traditional service as well. And we will kind of be diving a little bit deeper into that. And we'll have prayer workshops uh, a couple times a week all throughout that series. So you can learn more information about that, both on the handout and then at our connections table outside at as well. And those are great places to be able to learn a little bit more about different ways of praying throughout this upcoming season. All right. As always, if you ever have any questions or ways that we can help you, we would be more than happy to be able to help you out. Thank you, Hope. Good morning, everybody. If we haven't met yet, my name is Owen. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, happy Easter to all of you, or as for whatever reason, I can't stop saying Merry Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> How that happened, but that's where we find ourselves this morning. Uh, but it's good, good to be, good to be together. Good to be together. Uh, I want to begin our time together this morning with just a wee bit of a confession, and uh, that is that I sometimes lie. Uh, I feel like that's a dangerous thing to admit as a pastor. Um, I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be seen as a liar. It's a job hazard uh, for me. Uh, also, your pants are always on fire, which is uncomfortable. But. Um, <laughs> Every once in a while, I try to make a habit of it, but every once in a while, I feel like certain circumstances call for you to maybe say things that you don't fully believe are, are true, right? The good news is uh, you'll know when I'm lying because apparently, according to my siblings, I have a pretty distinctive tell, uh, and that is when I lie, my voice goes up. Uh, so 
Um, I, you know, just examples. Uh, we had somebody was coming to meet me. We had a meeting to plan for a meeting that we were meeting about. And um, when he came in to the office, I could tell he had that face on, like when you just got shook up at work. Things aren't going well. It was not a good day. Um, I didn't want to call him out when there were other people around, but we decided that instead of sitting at a table, we would walk laps around the building uh, for a little bit, get some fresh air. And uh, so as soon as we stepped out of the doors, I said, so um, how, how are things today? And he was like, they're great. And um, then he asked me out of courtesy, how are things for you today? I thought, well, since we're lying to each other, I'm fine. Like it was fantastic. So uh, we did decide to not lie to each other anymore. We spent three laps unpacking life uh, and then four and a half laps uh, with our meeting. Uh, so, uh, you know, we made up for it. Uh, I feel like my kids, I lie to them all the time. Um, my son, you know, hey dad, is the world burning down around us? No, it's fine. It's great. We'll leave it better than we found it. You know? um, again, certain circumstances, I won't belabor the point but you understand where, where I am now. And I, I make this confession to you uh, today because I, we all showed up this morning um, a, as an expectant people. Some of you showed up this morning and you are expecting to hear those familiar words that you love to hear and you get them once a year. Probably what that really means is you showed up expecting to sing some of your favorite songs, right? Um, and others of you, I assume, showed up this morning expecting to hear from someone like me standing in a place like I'm standing what you would imagine somebody like me would probably say. And you made an agreement with yourself on the way in that you weren't going to distract other people. And so you agreed with yourself that you were just going to politely nod and smile through most of what we're getting ready to do together today. Uh, but that probably at the end of the day, you weren't going to trust much of what I had to say. And I want you to know that I understand that. Uh, I understand that. The, the Easter story is a big one. It's a hard one to wrap our brains around. Um, it's one that sometimes I myself wrestle with and fumble through. Uh, and so I, I hear you, I understand you, uh, I get you. Um, I get it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was reading uh, a sermon, um, and uh, it was, I was reminded that as we kind of approach Easter, that I don't actually have to convince you to trust me today. Like, this is a good LeVar Burton reading rainbow sort of week, right? You don't have to take my word for it. The sermon that I was reading, it was by a guy named Peter. Peter was like the de facto leader in the early church, uh, which he came by honestly. Jesus kind of had appointed him to that work before Jesus died. We're a few weeks after the resurrection, and I'm reading Peter's sermon. It's not the first sermon Peter has preached that we recorded, um, but it's a few weeks sort of removed from those earlier days, and he has had a really disturbing dream when he's in a place called Joppa, and he's woken up and believes that God is sending him to this town called Caesarea, and when he gets there, he begins to preach to this family in the household of a guy named Cornelius, um, and he's got this really difficult task. His task is to explain Jesus to a group of people who didn't know, hadn't heard about, never met Jesus. And he's got to explain not just what Jesus did uh, kind of in his ministry. He's got to explain the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And he's, he's winding up in this sermon that he's preaching, this whole point about how uh, the work that Jesus did isn't just for some people, but it's for all people, even the people that we think would be excluded from the work of Jesus. And he, he wants to make a point that God is at work making all things new, making things whole, stitching things back together again. And he's doing it in this really like, beautiful, logical, methodical sort of way. He's moving point by point through this narrative progression. But what caught me off guard was so much was that in the middle of his sermon, in the middle of his sermon, uh, there's like an interjection. In the middle of the sermon, it's like he gets carried away uh, with the moment, with the part of the story that he's in, and he just sort of exclaims, and, and we, we are witnesses. It doesn't make any sense in what he's saying. He's going point by point by point, and then he just says, and we, we are witnesses. To this. A witness, as you may know, has two jobs. To see something 
and then to say something. A witness sees and experiences something. They do their best to kind of hold on to the parts and pieces of it. And then later, when the time is right, they tell the thing that they saw and experienced. They recount what they recall. That's what a witness does. And that's what we hear Peter doing. When he's telling the story of Jesus, he's not saying, well, these are some things that Jesus did. Jesus healed, uh, Jesus was crucified by the government, religious authorities, and then Jesus raised him. He said, we saw Jesus heal. We saw Jesus killed. We ate dinner with Jesus on Easter afternoon. And we, we are witnesses to all of this. We saw it. We saw it. I think it's hard sometimes for us to imagine and expect that the work of God, this resurrection work of God, is not just something that happened back then, uh, but happens even now today. But for the last few weeks, if you've been with us in worship, we've been inviting folks from our church family to come up. We gave them the mic, and we let them share stories with all of us about the work of God in their lives. They like Peter, are witnesses to the work of God. I think maybe they are the reason that Peter's line stood out to me so much. They're not sharing things that they've heard Jesus might do or could do or has done even in other places and among other people. They are sharing the work of God that they have seen in their own lives, the things that they have experienced. They are witnesses to the work of God. Some shared stories about how when their families were so fractured that reconciliation didn't seem like even a distant possibility, and how even still today, God forgives and restores and reconciles, rebuilds family. They shared about how when futures seem cut off and at a dead end, God works new things, heals and gives new lives and new futures to people. They talked about how God calls and equips and sends even unlikely people at unlikely times and unlikely places. They talked about how they've seen Jesus meet them in the wilderness, in moments where the foundation of their faith have been shaken. They trust that Jesus meeting them there is enough. I would encourage you, if you didn't hear all of them, to go back and listen. They're on our YouTube page. You can find them if you go to our website. Just look around. You'll find it or shoot me a text. Uh, I'll be happy to share them with you. It's hard for us with our 21st century sensibilities sometimes to imagine that God is still alive and at work in our world. But these folks were willing to stand up and vulnerably share how they have seen it. They saw it and they shared it with us. I was struck by the words of one of them. They even said at kind of the end of their story, if we hadn't seen it with our own eyes, we wouldn't have believed that it's true, that God is still in the business of making things whole. If we hadn't seen it with our own eyes, we wouldn't believe it's true. We are witnesses to the work of God in the world. Frankly, I'm not so sure it's that much different for them today than it was for Peter and the crew back then. Sometimes we just think about, you know, back then, well, things must have been different, but it's not like everyone was just being resurrected in first century, you know, Israel. Like, that wasn't something people came across all the time. I think sometimes we want to read history in that way. Uh, uh, C.S. Lewis refers to it as chronological snobbery, which I love that phrase. But for all those who were choosing to name themselves as witnesses, it was, it was not an easy thing to do. Half of them, their testimony wouldn't even have been admissible in a court of law. They wouldn't even have been trusted enough to offer credible testimony. All of them were under threat. Don't forget that the religious authorities were going literally door to door and pulling people out of their homes to kill them. When Peter says, and we were witnesses, he wasn't saying, just trust me. 
When he said it, it came at great personal risk. I love how choppy and messy and different all the Easter resurrection morning stories are. Everybody that tells the story sort of tells it through their vantage point, their lens. They remember things that were important to them, even if they're important to nobody else. They just tell what they saw. They're sharing what they experienced. Uh, Mary's story, Mary doesn't even get to tell her own story. John tells Mary's story. He starts off by talking about how Mary went to the tomb early in the day. She came back to let everybody else know. He ends his story by telling uh, sort of her encounter with Jesus uh, in the garden. And in between these very poignant and beautiful moments of someone else's story, he decides to interject his own story. And he talks about how he got in a foot race with Peter and he ran faster because apparently to John, everything in life is a competition. It does not matter that he got in a foot race with Peter on the way to the tomb. It bears no relevance to the story whatsoever. We preachers, we've given it relevance. That's what we're paid to do. But what I'm saying is it's just there and it's there because that's what he did. That's what he saw. And he wanted everyone else to remember that he beat Peter. That was probably the only time he beat Peter, but he thought, I'm writing this thing down. And forever, people will think I'm faster than Peter. He just shared his story. He saw something, and he shared something. These accounts, they don't hesitate to point out the embarrassing parts some of the disciples missed the moment. None seemed to have seen it coming, despite the fact that Jesus had been talking about it for weeks on end. Two of them walked down the road. They left Jerusalem and headed home, dejected. They talked to Jesus while they walked several miles and didn't realize it was him until he broke bread with them later that night and said, this is my body broken for you, and their eyes were open. They doubted each other. They challenged each other. They didn't trust or believe each other until they saw it with their own eyes. These stories that they've told are not stories that you cook up to make yourself feel better. They didn't scrub the narrative. They didn't come up with a party line. They didn't walk around saying, I'm sure he was resurrected. They saw something, and at great personal risk, they shared it with others. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women, who we've been talking about here, were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men, in dazzling white, said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, crucified, and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven, to the other disciples. They shared it with all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the disciples. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe it. How tragic would it be if that was the end of the story? How tragic and unfortunate would it have been, but there is yet one more verse, but Peter. Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. For whatever reason, Peter chose to get up, to go to the tomb, and to see for himself what had been shared with them. Even though it seemed too whatever to be true, he got up and he went. And because he did, a few weeks later, after making a journey from Joppa to Caesarea, in the middle of a sermon, he was able to say, and we 
we are witnesses to the work of God in the world. Friends, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. God is in the business of making things whole. If it were not true, if I had not seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed it. Don't miss the opportunity to get up and go see for yourself. Please do not miss the opportunity. Don't take my word for it. Go and listen to the stories that have been shared and then look and watch for it and wait for it. And if you're bold enough, pray for it. Be a witness and not a bystander to the work of God. And then when you've seen it, tell everyone what you've seen. Name the work of God in your lives. Point it out, please, for the love of everything holy. Don't be obnoxious about it, but it's good news. It's good news, and we need to hear good news. We need to be reminded that God still saves, that God still shows up, that God still heals, that God still makes a way where there seems no right to be a way, that God still chooses to love us even when we don't think we are worthy of love, and that God still forgives even the people we don't like so much. We need to be reminded. And then, when you've seen it and had a chance to share it, You can step back, and with great gratitude, you can say, and I, I have witnessed resurrection. Let's pray together. Lord, we're grateful that you invite us uh, to come and to see your work in the world around us. Even uh, when we choose not to, we're more grateful Uh, that you come and you seek us out. When we fail to seek you out, you come and find us behind doors locked tight. You extend your hands to us and remind us that we can touch and believe. You track us down on roads away when we put hope in the past tense. You meet us in meals to remind us that we are not alone. Lord, we thank you that you are at work not just in the world, but that you are at work in us. Heal us, restore us, forgive us, redeem us. Make us into the people you saw us as at our creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, in just a moment, we will have the opportunity to come and to feast together around this table. When we come around this table, we come as witnesses to the work of God. We don't just get to witness God at work through bread and juice, but we get to participate in this work together. So when we come and feast around this table, I invite you to recall maybe one way or another that you have been or hope to be a witness to the work of God in the world around you, or maybe the work of God in your own life. Might you remember when we come and feast around this table that we join with the earliest disciples that met Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the cup. But though they had been walking with him on that road to Emmaus, they finally recognized him when they were feasting together around a table. Friends, this is not my table, it is not our table or the table of the United Methodist Church, uh, but this is God's table. And therefore, all are invited to come and to feast together. And whenever we come, much like we might wash our hands before we eat our Easter meal together, so too we wash our hearts before we prepare for this meal as we pray a prayer of confession, confessing to God and to one another. So let us pray together these words that are on the screen behind me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God who created the heavens and the earth. And so with all of your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we join their praise unending. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray together. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, O God, declaring and being witnesses to your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. And the Lord Jesus Christ ascended. He promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. Amen. The night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he gathered around a table with his disciples. He took bread and broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to all of them, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. On the day that you raised Jesus from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued by breaking of the bread and sharing of the cup. So too we join in this today. In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we come offering ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So friends, let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I'm going to invite you to open your hands in a posture ready to receive. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. God, we boldly pray that by your Spirit you would make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at last at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, both now and forever. Amen. It is with the confidence of the children of God that we are bold to pray together the words that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'm going to go ahead and invite those who are serving communion to come forward to prepare for communion. 
And if this is your first time having communion with us or first time in a while, just a couple notes. Um, our ushers will direct you to the nearest communion station. And we do have a couple additional stations today. So just follow their lead and they will get you to the right place. And when you come forward, you'll be invited to um, take the bread with the words, this is the body of Christ given to you. And you'll be invited to dip the bread into the cup of grape juice and receive both elements at the same time. And if you are in need of gluten-free, then feel free to ask any of us at the bread stations. We'll have a basket on our arms with prepackaged gluten-free elements as well as prepackaged regular elements. So just let us know if you want either of those options, and we'd be happy to give that to you there. If you need to see the gluten-free ingredient card for communion elements, you can head to the back. And we have, um, I think, yes, Parker's raising his hand right now. He has the ingredient card for that if you need to see ingredients for gluten-free. Again, friends, all are welcome to come and to feast at the table of our Lord. And at this table, let us be witnesses of the work of God in our midst. Rise to Christ again. 
those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Those giants we call death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. So if I had not seen it with my own eyes, with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed that it is true. But God still heals, God still loves, God feel, still forgives, God still makes broken things whole. If that is something you desire in your life, simply that desire is enough. It is enough. We would love always uh, the opportunity, the honor of walking alongside you as you discover what that means for you and your life. Uh, there's a thousand different ways you can let us know, and less than a thousand, but a lot of different ways that we would love uh, to partner with you in that. So send us a text or an email or fill out a connect card or carry your pigeon. I don't care what you've got. Just use it, uh, and we would love a chance to journey with you um, as you experience the work of God, as you witness the work of God in your own life.
Absolutely. Yes. And on your way out, don't forget, if you are visiting with us, we've got cookies at all of the exits. So if you go down the adult wing, there's a table there. If you're going to pick up kids, we've got lots of cookies down there. And at our welcome tent, that's the white tent just past the Easter cross, feel free to grab at your cookies there. And we've got folks outside that are ready to take your photos. So if you haven't yet had your Easter photo by the cross, yes, not too late for that. And on our hospitality patio, which is out to my left, probably your right-ish, um, or behind you, feel free to grab coffee and donuts out there. We've got lots of games and bubbles and hula hoops and all kinds of fun linger things. Linger a little longer. On the front lawn, yes. Feel free to linger a little longer. We'd love, love a chance to get to hang out with you for a little bit this morning. Yeah. Now, as you head out into all the places that you live, work, and play, know that the same spirit at work that raised Jesus from the dead lives in each of you to go and to serve, to serve mm -hmm. God's people out of that power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys next weekend. Happy Easter. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what he does. He saves us. He brought the cross. Feed the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God. King Jesus.
well. Well, good morning, friends, and happy Easter. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Friends, happy Easter. It is so good to be in worship with you all today. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Hope. I serve as one of the pastors here. And it is always good to be together, but especially on Easter. Always feels like a bit of a homecoming, everyone in the house. Uh, hopefully, if you are visiting with us this morning, when you came in, you got a visitor bag filled with homemade cookies just for you. We had over 100 of them, and I don't want to end up with 100 cookies in my office. So please, if you didn't get one on the way in at our welcome tent, as well as kids check-in and the adult wing, we've got uh, tables with lots of visitor bags. So feel free to take one of those home with you today. And for everybody, you should see there is a Connect Serve card just in the chair pocket in front of you. It's a great way to get in touch with us. If you have any questions, if you want to get on our email list or anything like that, feel free to fill it out and drop it in the offering boxes in the lobby on your way out of worship. 
And we have lots of things coming up that you can get connected to. So on the way in, you should have gotten a handout. And at the top of that, it says, come learn some more. We have an event coming up on April 21st. And that is a perfect place to come if you have questions, if you're newer around here and you want to come ask a question. Owen and I will be hanging out on the hospitality patio making s'mores. And we'd love to make you one. So come hang out with us there. It is during kids programming. So feel free to drop kids off at youth or uh, small groups, and then you can come and make us more. And you will also see on your handout, the next thing is the scoop. We are headed to the scoop to eat some delightful ice cream on May 19th from 3 to 5. And this is our favorite way around here to kick off the summer. So we'd love to hang out with you there. Great place to, to meet some new friends as well. And we also have Forks and Fellowship coming up this summer. And that's a place to be able to be in a smaller-ish group of people and go to dinner about once a month. And if that's something you want to sign up for, then there's info at the bottom of this handout of how you can get connected there to Forks and Fellowship. And then if you flip this over on the back, we have prayer workshops coming up. Next Sunday, we are kicking off a brand new sermon series all about the Lord's Prayer. So maybe that's a prayer you regularly pray. Maybe it's one you grew up uh, learning. And we're really excited about the series to kind of walk through that prayer. And we have a bunch of workshops that are just one-off. You can come to one uh, on a Sunday or a Wednesday or come the next week or come to all of them. And you can find out more info at fbumc.org slash smallgroups24. And lastly, if you've been around for a bit or have questions about membership or baptism and you are looking to kind of get connected there, learn a little bit more about our church family, then we do have a new member class coming up in just a couple weeks. So you can go online at feumc.org slash new members. We'll take you to kind of all of the dates coming up for that. But we'd love the chance to be able to share a little bit more about our church family and ways in which we can get connected there. Well, let's worship together, sing some good Easter hymns. We've got Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's stand and worship our risen Lord.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, my name is David Brownlee. Please join with me in our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, 
we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee and after baptism, that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Be to God. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter, or as I have been uh, saying all morning long for whatever reason, Merry Christmas. I don't know how that happened, but that's where we find ourselves today, so that's where we are. Uh, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Owen. I'm one of the pastors here, and it really is uh, quite a gift to be together with all of you this morning. Uh, I want to begin uh, our time together with just a wee bit of a confession, uh, and that is that I don't always tell the truth. Um, I don't want to be a liar in general. That's not a good thing. I'm not advocating. Uh, it's a job hazard for some of us. Um, for others, it's qualification. But that's another subject for another day. <laughs> that was good. See, I, the 11 o'clock crew, I knew y'all would like that. Um, uh, but, you know, sometimes circumstances, uh, they call for uh, me, I feel like, even if I don't fully agree that something is true, I have to say it anyway. Um, a, uh, somebody came over to the church. We had a meeting to plan for a meeting. And when he got here in the office, I could just tell, he's like shell-shocked on his face. Like I could tell that he had had a rough day at work, you know, when you just kind of get shooken up. Um, and so we decided that instead of sitting at a table for our meeting, we would go for a couple of laps around the building. Uh, and as we were heading out, you know, we kind of got away from the crowd. We were heading out um, outside. I said, you know, how, like, how's, the, how's your day going? And he was like, oh, it's great. And um, then he said, how's yours? And I thought, well, since we're lying to each other. Uh, <laughs> now, here's what you need to know. Uh, my siblings discovered this about me a while back, and that is I'm not a good liar. Um, and so when I lie, I have a tell, and my voice goes up. And so when he said, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. <laughs> um, and then we decided not to lie to each other. We spent about three laps uh, working through all the things we needed to work through, and then about four more laps having the meeting, and then uh, I got tired and we had to stop. So um, I also feel like I lie to my kids a lot. I don't think I should, but, you know, my son might say, like, hey, Dad, is the world on fire? And you're like, no, 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 it's, it's fine. We'll leave it better than we found it. Um, again, certain circumstances... <laughs> Certain circumstances call, uh, call for this. I, I confess this to you, uh, I confess this to you, because I think it's important that we start there this morning. All of you, I imagine, uh, showed up today expectant, expectant. Many of you undoubtedly showed up expecting uh, that you would hear some of those good old familiar words uh, that you love to hear every year, that we would sing the hymns that you love to sing. Some of you showed up expecting that. Others of you showed up expecting to hear from someone like me what you would expect to hear from someone like me 
on a day like today, and you probably made yourself an agreement uh, that so as to not embarrass those that you were with, that you were going to agree with yourself to nod and politely smile through all of the things that you hear me say, um, even though you don't trust a word of them. And I want you to know that that's okay. I want you to know that's okay. The Easter story is it's hard to wrap our brains around. It's a big story. It's a big story. And we come up against a lot of things that don't make sense in the world as we tend to understand it. Um, and so if you don't trust me this morning, I want you to know that that's perfectly fine. I don't think it's my job to convince you to trust me, but this is my LeVar Burton moment, my reading rainbow moment. You don't have to take my word for it. I was reading um, uh, Peter's sermon. You heard uh, David read it just a second ago. Uh, I've been reading it. It's a, it's a, uh, Peter was a disciple of Jesus. He becomes like the de facto leader in the early church. So the sermon that we just read is, comes from like a few weeks after Jesus' resurrection. Um, and Peter has a fairly disturbing dream when he's in a town called Joppa. And he feels that God is calling him to get up and go to a place called Caesarea. Uh, and so he gets up and he goes. And when he gets there, he's in the home of a person named Cornelius. And all of Cornelius' people have gathered to hear what Peter has to say. And Peter's responsibility in this moment is to explain Jesus to these people who never met him, didn't see him, don't understand it, didn't experience it. And so Peter begins this very methodical, this very logical step-by-step -step narrative progression to explain to these people who've never heard of Jesus who he is, what he did, what happened to him. And at the same time, he's got to kind of explain death and resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's a tall task. This is a big order. He's making a grander point too, and you can hear him kind of make the point from the very beginning. He says, God shows no partiality. He says, if you think that you're outside of the purview of the work that Jesus did, you would be wrong. This work is for all people. God is in the business of restoring and redeeming. And he goes through this play-by-play -play of who Jesus is. But there's this moment in the middle of the sermon that seems to stand out to me in, in, a, in a way like it doesn't belong with everything else. He gets to the middle of it. There's an interjection. It's almost like an outburst. It's like he got riled up in the middle of his preaching and someone's just over there typing on their computer as quickly as they can. And he says, and we, we are witnesses. He gets carried away. A witness has two jobs, to see something and to say something. A witness's first job is to, to see and to experience something to do their best to, to take it all in. And then at, at a moment when the time is right, to share with others what they've seen and experienced. To recall that which they recollect. Peter says, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. It's not just that Jesus healed. It's not just that Jesus died. It's not just that Jesus rose. It's that we saw Jesus heal. We saw Jesus killed. We ate dinner with Jesus on Easter afternoon. We, we were witnesses to all of these things. For the last few weeks, we've been inviting folks from our church family uh, to come up here to take the microphone and to share stories of the work of God that they have seen in their own lives. Like Peter, they are witnesses to the work of God in the world. They've seen it, not just out there, but in their own lives. And having seen it, they were willing, painfully, vulnerably, to step up here and to say it out loud to all of you. I think maybe that's why Peter's line stood out to me so much. They weren't recounting third-person things that they've heard about what God can do, what God should do, what God might do, or even what God uh, has done over there. But they were saying, we, we are witnesses to the work of God. They were sharing personal stories as only they could do, reminding us that they had witnessed the work of God that forgives and restores, 
When families feel so fractured that there is no hope, it seems that they can be put back together, that God is still in the business of reconciliation. When futures felt at a dead end, that God still heals and makes new and gives new life, that God calls and equips and sends sometimes odd people in odd seasons of life to odd places, that God meets us in the wilderness, in hard moments when our faith foundations seem to have been shaken up, that God meets us in the wilderness of those moments and that it's enough. If you didn't catch their stories, I would really implore you to go back and listen. It is so easy for us in our 21st century sensibilities to dismiss the notion that God is at work in our world and in our lives, and yet they were willing to stand up and to bear witness to what they have seen. One said, even at the end of their uh, sort of their story, if I had not seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed that it is possible. But God is still in the business of making broken things whole. Their work over the past few weeks is not vastly different from the work of those that came before them. It's not vastly different than the work of Peter as he tried to bear witness to the stories of Jesus. We like to think about ourselves as being a particularly sophisticated bunch these days, but it's not just that everybody was being resurrected in first century, you know, Israel. Like that wasn't something that everybody was accustomed to. C.S. Lewis calls the way that we read back over history, he calls it chronological snobbery. It's like we tend to read everything in the past in black and white because that's what it looked like on the TVs in the first century. But they had real pressures on them as well. Half of them, their testimony would not even have been accepted as credible in a courtroom. All of them were being hunted down by the authorities. They were going door to door and they were dragging people out and murdering them in public just to try and root out the last storytellers of the people who knew, followed, and watched Jesus. And so for Peter to say, and we were witnesses, is not like saying, ah, just trust me. He said it at great personal risk. I love how choppy and messy and different all the resurrection accounts are from Mark to Matthew and Luke to John. Uh, Even you pick it up some in Acts and Corinthians as it goes along. Everybody kind of gets a chance, an opportunity to tell their version of the story. It's not a different story. It's just, it's the story as they experienced it. That's what a witness does. They see something and then they say something and they're just saying out loud what they saw. Everybody highlights something a little bit different because everybody experienced it from a little bit of a different place. Mary's story gets told by John, and John tells Mary's story beautifully for most of it. He talks about how Mary goes to the tomb in the morning. She comes back to let them know the body's not there. Then they go back to the tomb, and she gets a chance to meet Jesus there in the garden and speak with him. But in between these beautiful parts of Mary's story, John just decides to make the story about him for a second. Uh, And he tells this moment, he tells this story about he and Peter. They got in like a foot race to see who could get to the tomb first. And just side note, he beat Peter. It bears no relevance to the story. I mean, at all. Uh, We preachers are paid (laughs) very handsomely to try and tell you uh, all the different things that that might mean. But what I'm telling you is it doesn't. It just happened. He just wanted everyone for all of eternity to know that he beat Peter. It might have been the only time he beat Peter, but he said, I'm writing this down, and from now on, Peter, everyone will know that I am faster than you. Why did he tell that story? It's what he did. It's what he saw. It's how he experienced it. He just saw something and shared something. At the end of all these stories, like they they don't all line up, right? Nobody got together and said, let's come up with a party line. Nobody got together and scrubbed the narrative from the embarrassing parts. Some of the disciples missed the moment entirely. None of them seemed to have anticipated it until they were reminded to remember. 
Two of them walked down the road dejected for miles talking with Jesus and didn't even realize it was him until he broke bread with them over dinner and said, this is my body broken for you. They didn't trust each other. They didn't believe each other. They just sat and yelled. No one was telling these stories to make themselves feel better. They didn't have to walk around saying, oh, it's the resurrection, I promise. They saw it, and they shared it at great personal cost. But on the first day of the week, early at dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women, about whom we've been talking, were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men, the one in the dazzling clothes, said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember? How he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then, then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the disciples, the eleven, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. What a tragic end to Peter's story it would have been if that's where this story wound up. Yet there is but one more verse. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Because Peter chose to get up and go, even though the whole story seemed too whatever to believe. Peter got up, he went. And he saw. And in a few weeks, after taking a trip from a place called Joppa to the town of Caesarea, because he got up and went, he was able to say in the middle of his sermon, and we, we are witnesses. Friends, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. God is in the business of making things whole. If it were not true, if I had not seen it with my own eyes, I would not tell you. Please, please do not miss the opportunity to get up and go and see it for yourselves. You don't have to take my word for it. Go and listen. Listen to the stories on YouTube. Listen to the stories of those in your life and then look. Watch for it, wait for it, and if you are bold enough, pray for it. Be a witness to the work of God and not a bystander only. And then, when you've seen it, tell everyone who will listen what you have seen. Don't be obnoxious about it. That's not what I'm asking you to do. But it's good news. And we need some good news. We need to remember that God still saves, that God still heals, that God still reconciles, that God still makes whole. We need to remember that God is still at work in the world, and you hold those stories, and so share them. And then, when you're done, and you step back, you will be able to say with great gratitude, and I... I am a witness to the resurrection. Let's pray. Almighty God, we don't always see. And when we see, we don't always say. 
We are grateful this morning that even on days when we don't feel like getting up and going to look, that you come to us. That you come and find us when we're closed behind locked doors. That you come and meet us, show us, let us touch and know that you're there. That you come and you find us around a table and you remind us that we're not alone, but that we are loved, that we are forgiven, and that we are yours. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
Friends, in just a moment, we will have the joy of getting to gather around this table and to feast together. When we come around this table, we come as witnesses to the work of God, as witnesses to the work of God in bread and juice, that in this holy mystery, we get to gather around this table and to meet God as we feast together. As we gather, we are witnesses to the work of God in our community, work of God in our friends and our family and in our very own lives. We come this morning not just as witnesses, but also as participants in this work that God is doing in and through us and all around us. When we gather around this table, we come with a posture of confession, uh, bending before God and towards one another. And so as we do, uh, in the same way that in a few hours we might gather for a meal with our family to celebrate this day, um, we'll wash our hands as a preparation for that feast. So too, when we come to feast at this table, we wash our hearts as we confess to God and to one another. So let us join as we confess together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As we come around this table, we come rehearsing and remembering what God has done in our midst. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, our God Almighty the one who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so with your people on earth and with all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, let us pray together. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you, O oh God, gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And you made with us a new covenant by water in your spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now, O oh God, we are your people. Declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We remember that when the Lord Jesus Christ ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. Amen. When Jesus gathered around a table at the Last Supper, and then again, after the road to Emmaus, he took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his friends, his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to all of them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. We remember today that on the day that Jesus was raised from the dead, 
he was first recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup. So it is in the power of your Holy Spirit that your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing in the cup. So we get to come and to feast in the same remembrance. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we too come offering praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So friends, let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I invite you to open your hands in a posture of receiving as we continue to pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. God, we boldly ask that your spirit would make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at last at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, both now and forever. Amen. It is with the confidence of the children of God that we can pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm gonna go ahead and invite those who will be serving communion in the choir to come forward. And as they do so, just a couple notes of instruction, particularly if this is your first time or first time in a while having communion with us. Um, you will be invited by the direction of the ushers. So if you would like to come forward, feel free to follow their lead. We do have a couple extra stations today. So just pay extra careful attention to where they are sending you to. And when you come forward, you'll be given a piece of bread with the words, this is the body of Christ given for you. You'll be invited to dip that bread into the cup of grape juice and then receive both elements at the same time. And when you come, if you need prepackaged communion or gluten-free prepackaged communion, all of the bread servers will have a basket on our arms. So feel free to just point to the basket and let us know what you need. And we'd be happy to serve you in that way. And if anyone needs to see an ingredient card for the gluten-free ingredients, then we have Nancy in the back. She's waving her hand right now. She'd be happy to uh, get you that ingredient card and serve you gluten-free communion there in the back. Friends, this is not a table that is ours. It is not mine. It is not the United Methodist Church's table, but this is our Lord's table. And therefore, all are welcome to come and to feast at this table. And there's nothing that should keep you from feeling the utmost welcome at the table of our Lord. So let us come and feast together.
If I had not seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have known that it was possible. God is at work in the world, and not just in the world out there, but in you, in me, in us. God still heals, God still saves, God still reconciles, God still makes new. If that is something that you won't need or desire in your life, know that simply the desire is enough, is enough. We would love the privilege and honor of walking alongside you if there are ways that we can partner with you uh, in that journey. Please never hesitate to reach out. Uh, you can text, you can call, you can email, carrier pigeon, whatever you feel like <laughs> is your most convenient method of uh, communication. Or a connect card, but carrier connect pigeon card. would be yeah. more fun. Well, you tie a connect card to the carrier pigeon. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, um, that's the way for sure. But we really would. Uh, we would treasure that opportunity. Yes, and as we head out, don't forget, if you are visiting with us today, to grab a visitor bag with some homemade cookies. You can find those at all of the exits, and we also have lots of coffee and donuts on the hospitality patio right back this way, or you can head out through the lobby doors, and it's just to your left, and it has just been so much fun to get to be together. There's lots of games and bubbles and hula hoops and all kinds of fun things on the front lawn. So feel free to hang out with us while you're eating your donut as Take well. Take a picture. Yes, that's true. We have uh, the Easter cross just past the fountain and we've got folks there be really happy to take your photo. So if you haven't had an Easter photo yet, it's not too late. They can do that just there. All right, we're gonna reserve our benediction. If you need to slide out, please know that you're welcome. But for our choral benediction, we're singing the Alleluia Chorus, and we have copies of the music. Yes, the full one. So, so if, you if any come of you like to sing, oh, yeah, oh, there's always people. a few. There yes. we go. Elise, I love it. Come on. One, two. Oh, Maggie, you're getting called oh, out. Oh, here comes Maggie. <laughs> she is the, the there master we go. Come on, Rosa, this person. Way yes, come on, Rosa. Yes. All right. Oh, there we go. Holding down the bass line over here. David's coming up. That's oh, good. Oh, all right. Well, I now we it. started. Good oh, Lord. Multiple Davids There's now. not that much all room right. up here. I love it. Ah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. <laughs>
is resin indeed. Go in peace. We'll see you guys next weekend.